I came across this really cool example of a horizontal scrolling layout where elements are being skewed based on the velocity of the scroll. So lucky for you, I figured out how to do it. And it's not that hard with the use of GSAP or the GreenSock Animation Platform in their Scroll Trigger plugin. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so here we go with the project. Um, as we can see, there's just pretty much an empty um, index.html. I'm gonna put link in CSS main .css. As we can see, we also have a file um, up over here as a main SAS file, and I am currently watching that. So you wanna make sure you have the live SAS compiler with that going. It's empty as you can currently see. Um, we also, I, we're gonna get started with the HTML. So the HTML, I'm probably just gonna paste in some of these and I'll just, I, the rule sets, or not the rule sets rather, but rather the HTML elements and then just describe them as I go. So the first one's gonna be a scroll wrapper and the purpose of this element right here is gonna contain everything and also we're gonna place over, uh, overflow X hidden in CSS so that there's no horizontal scroll bar. If you try leaving this out in the context of this project, you'll see a horizontal scroll bar. Uh, next up, we're gonna have a section element inside of that. If I could type, there we go. And then inside of that, we're gonna have an H1 element that just says gallery. All right, this will be position fixed, by the way, um, and it'll stay position fixed, essentially, regardless of the scroll position. Um, you could choose to add this or not. And then we're gonna have an actual scroll container. All right, and then, Inside of that, we're gonna have a slide. Um, we're gonna have three different slides and I will simply paste the first one in just to describe it real quickly. And this is simply a class of slide. And then we're gonna have a div class of skew group and then gallery right here. So what essentially this is doing is I, the skew group, this means anything that's placed inside of this element right here. So any of these elements like here, here and here will have the skew effect applied to it. So you could put anything. In this case, I'm putting four images. You could put any other HTML element. You could put type and it will skew as well. Um, the other gallery uh, class right here, that's just for other styling purposes. So you'll see in the CSS in a minute how that works. And so what I'm gonna do now is simply take the div class slide and we're gonna paste it in. Oopsie, I hit the wrong key. There we go two more times. So this gives us three slides. Each slide is gonna consume basically 100 viewport width. So we'll have one, two, and then three. All right, and that's it for the HTML. Or the HTML. And then the CSS, again, very straightforward. We're just gonna use here, I'll uh, zoom up a bit, uh, a body of font family pop-ins. Um, this should be sans serif rather. And then margin zero height, 100 viewport height, simple enough. Then we're gonna go ahead and put in two more roll sets real quickly. Our H1, this is just getting a position fixed in the font size and margin up. And then also our scroll wrapper is gonna be overflow X hidden to get rid of that scroll bar. Additionally, we're gonna have our gallery. So we have a gallery class. And again, that's right here on each of the div class SKU groups. And that's just gonna be a display flex, a gap of 6M between each individual image. Uh, and then the image right here, we're, we're setting an aspect ratio to make sure they're always uh, a square. And then just making width 20% here in the context of this project, because um, I wanted them to be smaller. Um, after that, we're gonna go ahead and also put in the last rule set, which has a couple nested rule sets. And that's gonna be the section element. So remember the section element is, if I were here, this entire thing right here. We're styling the section with a height of 100 viewport height and overflow hidden. And then we have our scroll container, which is the parent element that has our three slides inside of it. So that has a height of 100 viewport height. Now this part's real important. The width of 300 viewport width, we're just putting that in manually because we know we have three different slides. So then we'll have a, a flex direction, or a flex, display flex rather, a flex direction, a row, overflow X hidden as well here. And then we also have down here a div, and wait a second, let's make sure, yeah. Okay, so this is selecting each slide. I, I was wondering, it's like, why don't we put slide there? We could just put slide here as well if you wanted to. And then 
Each one of those slides has a 100 viewport height, 100 viewport width, a display flex, justify content center, align item center. That centers all the images inside of it. So very straightforward. If I go ahead, right click, open with live server, we'll check what this looks like on the browser. And here it is. This is what it looks like. Um, right now, we only see the first slide and the four images inside of it uh, because we have no way to scroll right now to see the other ones. So now we're gonna go ahead and switch to JavaScript and we have to import um, some libraries first. So the first one we're gonna import here is, I wanna use smooth scroll on this and right now the best smooth scroll library out there in my opinion is Lennis. All right, so if you type in Lennis smooth scroll in Google, you'll find that and you'll see how we'll go ahead and integrate that in a second. We also have to include GSAP, which is the Greensock animation platform. If you just type in GSAP 3 CDN in Google, you'll find the first result and you can just grab this code here or just obviously click on the top link in the YouTube description to get access to this code. And then finally, we also have to import the scroll trigger plugin, which is a part of the Greensock animation platform family. And this allows us to use and define scroll triggers. After that, we're gonna go ahead and open up a script tag to write in our JavaScript. Okay, a lot of talking there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to register the, uh, the scroll trigger plugin. So because it's an, it's an external library that we import, we have to register it right here in order just for us to, to even work with it. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and say let slides equals GSAP utilities or utils to array and we say slide. Now essentially we're just selecting all the elements within the class of slide and converting them, which is a node list in JavaScript, to an array. And then this allows us to perform array operations on the slides later in the code. All right, next up, after that, we're gonna go ahead and define a GSAP2 uh, property. So we're gonna store this in a variable uh, called scroll tween equals GSAP2. We're gonna take the slides defined in the line above and then we're gonna open it up in parentheses here inside of an object. So inside of here, we're actually gonna put in what the code is suggesting uh, pretty much. So X percent is gonna be negative 100, multiply that by slides.length minus one. What the heck is that doing? You might be wondering. So essentially it's creating an animation that will move the slides horizontally because we want a horizontal slider. And then the next part of this right here is simply calculating the total amount of movement needed necessary to move through all of the slides. Okay, after that, we're going to specify ease none. We don't need easing. We're kind of gonna let Lennis control the, the smooth scrolling easing essentially for us. And then we're, we define a scroll trigger right here. So scroll trigger, and then we open this up here in an object. All right. So now we have to define an actual trigger for the, uh, the, the this section. So the trigger is gonna be the parent container that's wrapping around almost all of this, which is the section element, all right? We could probably use the scroll wrapper element as well, but section will work just as well. Um, outside of that, we're gonna put pin true. Now, if you remove this line, uh, scroll will not work, all right? So just, re just remind yourself that you have to have that pin true in order for it to work. So what it typically does, it's going to pin the trigger element in place, causing it to stay stationary while the rest of the content moves. Um, after that, we're gonna have a scrub property, you're such a scrub, uh, of 0 0.1. So for the scrub property, it makes the animation follow the scroll position, if that makes sense. Um, and the number 0 0.1 is the lag of the animation behind the actual scroll position. So if you try screwing around with this number, it will greatly affect and probably break the intended uh, result. So then finally, we're gonna put an end, and the end is actually a really interesting property. Um, if I put plus equals, and then we put say 3000, uh, it's going to, to essentially act as a velocity control, like how fast it will it move through all of the slides that we have. Uh, like how much do you have to use your mouse scroll wheel in order to get through all of them? 
Uh, and so we'll play around with this number so you can see the actual effects. Now, finally, we're gonna tap into something called, uh, a method called on update, And then we're gonna say self, and this is a function that will run every time that the scroll position updates. So whenever you're uh, dragging the scroll bar or you're using your mouse scroll wheel, this thing fires, essentially. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and define a property called let, and this is gonna be called skew amount equals self. So self means this is uh, information that's passed in as a part of this method right here. And that is going to be um, called get velocity. So get velocity is basically returned by scroll trigger plugin that allows you to see how fast things are being you know scrolled through essentially. And then we apply a little bit of division on that, and that will help us determine how much skew is going to occur, occur based on the velocity. So the, I believe it's the, the higher the number, the less skew occurs. The lower the number, you're gonna see massive skew. You don't want too much, because it'll look ridiculous. All right, uh, after that, we're going to also integrate a scale amount, but we're not going to integrate that just yet. Um, I wanna define it though. So scale amount right here, and because we're gonna grow each uh, element inside of the skew group as well. So it's going to skew and grow at the same time. Uh, and so what that'll be is one plus math dot abs self dot get velocity once again, and then we divide that by 20,000 or so. All right, so that's a little bit confusing. So what it's doing essentially is taking the scroll velocity and using it to, to calculate the scale amount. So this number right here, if you play with it, then I it will affect how much the items scale up based on uh, the velocity as well. So we could play around with that value as well. Um, I believe the higher the number, the less it is scaled. The lower number, it'll be like it'll go like crazy. So just just keep that in mind. Then what we do is we take slides, all right, which is our array right up here, and we say for each, we pass in a slide. So this gives us each individual slide inside of here that we can then do something and animate stuff with. So what's really cool about GreenSock is we it, it gives us a skew X property right here, instead of us having to put tie in the individual CSS properties natively. So skew X is gonna be set to skew amount. All right, that's simple enough. Actually, you know what, I just screwed up. Let's back up right there. Actually, let's copy that. Let's copy this line. That way we don't have to write it again. We have to put GSAP2, there we go. So then what we do is we're gonna do a slide dot query selector and then skew group. All right, so what that does is we have to, we take our slides for each, we grab the, we have access now to each individual slide right there in that line and then right here we say GSAP2 because we want to animate the slide query selector skew group. All right. So anything that's inside of the skew group is going to going to be animated inside of this line. Then we take skew x skew amount. Uh, we're we're going to do scale, but we're not going to integrate that right away. Uh, so we'll come back back to that. We're gonna have another property called overwrite, and that's true. And essentially, what it does is making sure that each uh, a new animation immediate re, immediately replaces any existing animations on the same property. Uh, because remember, this is firing uh, very fast. And then also, we're going to specify uh, an ease. So we'll just do power one out. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens if we try to run this. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Okay. So it kind of works, right? But not really. It's not resetting back to its original size or the, the, the original skew, which is zero. So we can tie into another method here, and this is gonna be on scrub complete. All right, so this function essentially will run when the user stops the scrolling. 
All right, so when we do that, I what we want to do is run through the slides for each. We take the slide just as this was suggesting and we're going to leave that there. So the first line is GSAP to slide query selector skew group. That's going to be skew X is zero. Uh, we want to also make sure that here we don't have to put overwrite true. In this case, um, we can specify a duration of 0 0.5 for once the scroll is stopped and it reverts back to its original state. Uh, ease power one out is fine as well. And that should be good right there. So let's go ahead and go back. Now, sometimes when you refresh, it acts kind of wonky like that. All right, so it's kind of working here. But we haven't yet integrated the smooth scroll from Lennis, because remember, up here, we're importing it, but we're not yet using it. And if you go to Lennis documentation, they show you a very simple way to, to get it up and running. So if I come back here, let's go to check it out in GitHub. It provides you with the minimal setup right here under setup. So if we take this smooth scroll and we paste that in, we'll save it. All right, check that out. It's just much more smooth. I really like the Lennis Smooth Scroll Library. All right, so what if we also wanted to enlarge each one of these while it's it's scrolling, like the original effect? So essentially what we do, it's actually really easy. We already defined the property and that property is skew amount right here. So if we just take scale, and I'm gonna do a scale Y on this instead of scale entirely because otherwise they overlap each other when they're growing out and you can experiment if you want. And then we just put scale amount here and then when it's finished, we reset the scale Y to one, which is the default size. So let's try it now, let's go back. All right, and there we go. Awesome, awesome stuff. Scroll Trigger and the Greenstock Animation Platform makes doing stuff like this relatively easy just with a little bit of JavaScript. If you're interested in this sort of thing, definitely check out designcourse.com forward slash AF for the upcoming advanced front ends course where we're gonna cover everything from scratch I with Greensock Animation Platform, some 3JS as well, in order to create really cool interactive projects like this. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.